because your research project requires current research information in addition to background or overview material, you will need to know what types of articles to use. For the most part, you will focus on a few articles from journals in the primary literature to synthesize your topic. Let's take a look at what primary sources are. In your literature search, you should use the primary literature in biology, biochemistry, or medicine. There are obviously too many to list here, but you will find they are excellent sources of concrete examples, statistical analysis, and other research evidence. Primary literature sources are defined as uninterpreted sources of information and can be a very important part of a literature search. Primary sources allow you to examine the actual evidence of studies and experiments firsthand without being affected by other opinions. Then you are able to draw comparisons between your assessments and the conclusion of others. Primary information is produced for a specific problem or task and is usually reported by someone who is the author or scientist or someone directly involved in the study or that has witnessed the biological events, in the case of behavioral studies. Thus, if a researcher tests the effects of a newly developed drug on mice, or if an ornithologist observes the reproductive behavior of a bird, or a neurologist studies the effects of various ions on nerve impulse transmission, they are creating primary information. Primary sources are usually written by the person who did the research, conducted the study, or ran the experiment. Primary sources are detailed reports of the results from the study reported directly to the reader. In most cases, these sources report on a single study. Here are some clues that let you know that you're looking at a primary literature source. A report of primary research often begins with a literature review or synthesis of the theory to be tested and other research relevant to the topic being studied. This helps set the context of the work or study. It will contain extensive citations, usually in the introduction and in the conclusion or discussion sections. The introduction section includes, and usually ends with, an explanation of hypothesis and or goal of the research. The hypothesis and goals usually also appear in the abstract or summary. A detailed description of the population or sample in the study is provided. You should also find an outline of the research methodology and, when applicable, statistical processes used. Importantly, you should find a detailed report of results that almost always includes supporting figures, tables, and data analysis, such as statistics generated from the study. And finally, a discussion of their significance. Examples of primary sources include experimental research, observational studies, correlational studies, pilot studies, survey research, and case studies. Now let's take a look at secondary sources. Secondary information is a repackaging of primary information. A secondary source may be an article that restates, examines, or interprets the finding of the original primary source research. Secondary literature lists, summarizes, and evaluates primary information and studies so as to draw conclusions concerning our current state of knowledge about a particular subject. In other words, secondary sources interpret the primary literature or guide readers to the primary material. Often they discuss more than one study or experiment at a time. They may also include a bibliography that can effectively lead you back to the primary research reported in the article. Okay, so here are some clues that a report or article is a secondary source. It contains reviews of literature on a topic. No specific hypothesis is being tested, but rather it is a synthesis of various research findings. A secondary report will summarize findings from various studies and research groups. Secondary sources also include historical overviews of research on a topic. Remember, secondary sources are far removed from the original research. Examples of secondary sources are books, textbooks, or anthologies. However, secondary sources can also include so-called magazines done in a journalistic style. These include such journals 
as National Geographic, Discover, Science News, and even many websites like WebMD.